Okay, hey everybody. Um, so for the 182 light and color class today, what we want to talk about is uh, is light meters. And you know, not to overdo it or anything like that, but <clears throat> remember that that light meters uh, are, are are calibrated. to 18% gray, right? So that's all the light meter is trying to give you is 18% gray. And it's why for, for years, uh, you know, I carried a gray card in my camera bag because this always will give you the opportunity to get a correct or an accurate meter reading simply by doing this, right? Just holding the card up, punching the light meter, you know, turn the camera on. Let's get a reasonable camera settings here. Pretty dark in here. There we go. So, you know, I don't have to look. I can just kind of hold the light meter or hold the camera down and look at it. You know, it's telling me, hey, about a fifteenth of a second at f4.5. All right, if I angle it down and get a little bit more light on it, you know, it's, uh, I can get by with about a thirtieth of a second at f4.5. So a gray card <clears throat> is your friend uh, because you will get accurate reading. Look, the idea here is, is to not do this, right? Take a picture, look at it, make an adjustment. Take a picture, look at it, make an adjustment. Take a picture, look at it. Oh, that's what I want. So now it took you three pictures or three clicks on the shutter looking at the LCD screen, which is not, you know, the most accurate or the best thing to look at to determine if you got a good picture or not, right? The easiest thing to do is to find a midtone, right? Find some something that's a midtone, right? Something that's kind of 18% gray. You know, you can't quite see my pants, but you know, blue jeans that are worn a little bit are pretty close. You know, actually, this maroon sweater is pretty close to 18% gray. Don't look at the color; look at the reflective value, right? How about this backdrop? Now it's a little bright compared to the 18% gray, but it's not bad. You know, you certainly don't want to meter off of this whiteboard, right? Whoa, that's way different. And that's what can happen, right? The light meter essentially is getting fooled, right? Because it's only trying to do this, 18% gray. And if you meter off of something white, it's going to try and give you 18% gray. So when you take the picture, even though the light meter is at zero, right, the picture is going to be kind of dull and underexposed and kind of yucky, you know, not doesn't look very good. The opposite is true if you're photographing something fairly dark, right, like I have my, 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 my three amigos here, the three cutouts. You see me use these in the classroom, the three cutouts, right? You take a picture of something predominantly dark, right? The light meter is going to try and give you 18% gray, so it's going to overexpose that. So you need to learn what the light meter is trying to do, right? It's only trying to give you 18% gray. The next thing we have to look at is that we have patterns in our cameras for our light meters. We might have one that looks like that. We might have one that looks like that, or we might have one that looks like that, or we might have one that's just open. Okay? So you need to find these in your camera menu screens. And I'll put this one up because it's a little bigger and I can see it a little bit easier. All right? So on mine, on this particular camera, you get so the light meter will, or the camera meter will focus up on it. Hang on, let's bring those up again. You'll see that this camera has four different metering zones. Okay? And you can kind of cycle through those. Whoops. You can kind of cycle through those and select which one you want to use. You can kind of cycle through them. Let me get the glare off of it. 
right, and cycle which ones you want to use. This particular camera has four different metering zones. Now this camera, my, my uh, this is my T7, right, this one only has a few, it doesn't have quite as many. So I have to go into my menu screen and find it. Takes a second here because I can't remember where it is. Metering mode. Right? It says metering mode. I get the autofocus to come up there. Come on, there we go. Getting too close. Metering mode. So we scroll down and find metering mode and punch it up. This one has three different metering modes. Right? And we can cycle through those. Center weighted average, evaluative, partial. Okay. So all these different metering modes are simply different percentages of what the camera or what the light meter is actually looking at. Okay, like for this one, that little dot in the center of the screen is 100%. Okay, this one might be, say, uh, you know, 60% in the center, maybe, uh, uh, you know, 20% over there, and maybe 10% down here, and maybe 10% over there, something like that. This one might be, you know, 70% there, 20% there, and 10% the rest. Okay, this one... Uh, is a center weighted average so it tends to look like this like a mountain in the middle and it might be 80% in the middle and 20% around the outside. Those of you who have a Nikon camera you, you might have a matrix metering mode which picks a bunch of different points all around inside the frame and kind of averages those together. That one seems to work pretty good. So what I want you to do is to find these metering modes in your camera. That's the first part of the assignment. Just find them, right? Find where they are. Then I want you to go through them, okay? So it's a very simple assignment, right? I just want you to go through these metering modes, and I want you to find, if you have three of them, three of them, four of them, four of them, whatever. And I want you to take some take the same picture right take the same photo so take one I don't care you know try and find a variety of conditions let me erase this and we'll get on to what exactly the conditions I want you to look for So try and find, uh, here you go, one. Find a high contrast scene. Right, find a high contrast scene. And I want you to run through each one of those metering modes. So if you have three metering modes, you'll take a picture, get a good exposure, take a picture, then change from metering mode A to metering mode B and take the same picture. Then take the same picture of metering mode C. So you'll have three pictures of the same thing, but I want you to change the metering mode each time. So take a picture of the, say, center weighted average, right? So let's see. I take a picture. I'll do one of the evaluated first. Take the picture. Then I'm going to go into my, my menu and I'm going to change that to partial, take the same picture. Then I'm going to change that to center weighted average and take the picture. Now, if the light meter tells you to move, to adjust, to get exposure, do that. Do whatever it tells you to do. And let's see what the differences are. Okay? Then there's going to be a fourth picture, a mystery picture. And that is going to be, I want you to go and find a light meter for your phone. Right? You have a smartphone. Most all of you do. If you don't, you don't have to do it. Find a light meter. So go to the 
you know, the App Store or Google Play or whatever and find a light meter app for your phone. There's lots of different light meter apps. There's lots of different camera apps, depth of field apps. There's all kinds of things you can find various apps for photography. There's even a gray card app, right? There's even a gray card app. That would be great to have. Just hold your phone up, take a meter reading off of that. It won't be entirely perfectly accurate, but it may be quite helpful, right? So find a high contrast scene, so something that's really bright and dark. See what we're doing. We're going to try and fool the light meter here. See what happens, okay? Then I want you to find uh, some type of a reflection and do the same thing. So if you have, like I have with my T7, I have three light metering modes plus the metering app on my phone. So I'm going to have four pictures for my high contrast scene and I'm going to have four pictures for my reflection scene. Then I'm going to try and find something more even toned. Okay, so four pictures for high contrast, four pictures for reflection, four pictures for even tone. If you have a better camera or a more expensive camera that has four metering zones built in plus your phone, then you'll have five pictures. So you'll have 5, 10, 15. If you have a T7 or something similar to this, you'll have four, so four, eight, twelve. Okay. Those are all the pictures you'll have in, for this particular assignment, right? Now just remember that, you know, the light meter will get fooled easily by bright and dark subjects. So this is going to be tough, right, uh, with the, the snow, a lot of snow we have out right now. So that's going to fool the light meter into thinking the snow is 18% gray, so your pictures are going to be underexposed by a good stop or stop and a half. So you kind of have to know that when you're taking pictures of, of, of uh, bright or dark subjects that you need to under overexpose on purpose to get the correct exposure. Right? So the light meter does a good job but it gets fooled easily. Okay. Now, what can you use these various metering patterns for? If you have a partial instead of a spot, well, that's only going to meter a small section of the frame. Well, that can be really great in the high contrast situation, right? And where does your primary subject lie? Is it in a brighter area or a darker area? Then you want to make sure you're metering in that area, wherever your primary subject is. Does that make sense? Of course it does, right? Uh, the evaluative or the kind of the standard uh, default light meter setting works pretty well, right? Camera manufacturers have done a pretty good job with that, right? I, I tend to use the evaluative and the spot meter are my two favorites because the spot meter lets me meter just a tiny little dot in my picture, right? Anywhere in that picture, right? I could just meter my face or my shirt or my blue jeans or the white with a whiteboard or the background, I don't meter everything. It just allows you to meter a spot, which is very handy to be able to do. So I use those two meters most of the time. If you don't have a spot, try the partial. And you can move it around and you'll see your light meter swing as you move it around from bright to dark areas. So that's the whole idea, all right? So find a high contrast scene, find a reflection, and find an even tone scene. And if you can, you know, go to, uh, you know, the paint store or like Home Depot or something and find a good mid-tone gray that you can use. And that can be your little, your little gray card that you take with you, okay? And here, you know, we take this a little further, right? We use, we used to use, use a lot of chip charts uh, in our photographs, especially on like the first frame. Because now we have a reference as to what these colors really are, right? So having a reference, so that's what a gray card is, is a reference point to get you a good bit of information to make a good exposure on your first or second frame, not your third or fourth, right? 
So where do you look? You know, if, if, you, if you walked around with me, uh, obviously not now because it's, everything's covered with snow, but I'll typically point my camera down at the ground and meter off of decently green grass, right? That's pretty close to 18% gray, right? So there's some things that you can look at to try to get a decent meter reading, right? So you want to think tonality of the scene or tonality of where you're getting your metering information. Don't look at color. Look at the reflective value of the subject, okay? So do this simple exercise, right? Find a high contrast scene, find a reflection, find an even tone scene, and run through your various light metering modes and see if it makes a difference, right? It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward uh, assignment, okay? All right, cool. Um, there's rumblings that we may be able to get back into the classroom soon. I will let you know as soon as that happens. Uh, we do have a couple of technical assignments that uh, under controlled conditions that we need to do. It would be very difficult to do at home. So I'm hoping to be able to see you all soon. So watch your Mott student Gmail, and I will also put it in announcements in Canvas uh, if and when we're able to get back on campus. Now, we won't meet every week when we get back on campus. We'll probably meet three or four times the rest of the semester, just so you know what's coming, okay? Because a couple of things that we really can't do at home, and they're coming up soon. So uh, hopefully we can, uh, we can meet in person and I can get to know you guys a little bit better and uh, we can get these uh, more technical assignments done and then we can start having some fun and do some other topics that are really fun as we get going later on in the class. Okay? All right, so I'll see you next week. Bye.